Tenny McCarty. I'm the owner and founder of Shades of Hope Treatment Center in Buffalo Gap, Texas. And I want to take a few moments today to talk with you about anger. You know, we're living in a time in our country, well, in the world, with the uh, coronavirus, that it is uh, a time of unrest. It's a time of, uh, I mean, we've never, we've never experienced this before. And I think anger is one of the things that's really bubbling up now, more so than right at first. It's bubbling up with a lot of people. And, you know, at times there are people who can't show anger. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. You know, in our society, if women show a lot of anger, they're called, well, you know, the B word. They're called a bitch. Well, she's just a bitch. <laughs> and if men get angry, uh, you know, sometimes we see them as being powerful. And, you know, it's not really, a, this is not really about a sexist talk. It's just about how, how our country has, is, or I mean, I think it's pretty much universal about the difference between how men and women can show anger and what men can get by with that women can't. So a lot of and people will deny that they have anger because it's not like the thing to do. Maybe it's not ladylike. Maybe it's not what a good Christian does. Whatever their thought pattern is, uh, they will deny having anger. So I have a list. It's called the checklist of hidden anger. And I want to go through this checklist and see if you have any of these because anger can be sneaky. It can come up uh, when we least suspect it. So we'll go over it and see if you can identify it with any of these, find yourself in any of these. The first one is about procrastination. <clears throat> and procrastination can also be hidden fear. Actually, fear is the thread that runs through of, uh, of all of our feelings. It's really the underneath of everything. Uh, that procrastination is about hidden fear in that we put off doing something that uh, someone else wants us to do. For instance, uh, you work in a job you don't really like, you have a boss you like even less, and they give you a report to do, and you say, sure, I'll have it done tomorrow or the next day, and you don't want to do it. So you keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, and if they ask about it, they'll say, you'll say, oh, I'm working on it. I'll have it done tomorrow. And what that is, is just a royal up yours. It's just a really royal, you know, I don't want to do this. That's what, that is a case of hidden anger, procrastination. And then another one is kind of goes along the same thing. It's about control. It's about habitual lateness. When someone is continually late, uh, it is about control. And a lot of times it's about they don't even want to be doing what they're doing and they can't say, no, I don't want to do it. And so they just show up late, show up late. That can be a sign of hidden anger. Another one is sadistic or ironic humor. We hear a lot of that in our society, sadistic or ironic humor. And then if the person, you know, catches it and realizes that it's a slam, that it's not funny, you know, then the person saying it will say something like, well, good night, can't you take a joke? They'll just project it on the other person instead of acknowledging that it, I mean, it is a part of hidden anger. Instead of telling the truth, they'll tell a joke, joke about it. Uh, you know, that can be jokes about blondes or women or men or different ethnic groups or different political parties. It's, they joke about things that are serious and uh, that actually the very it can be a lot of hidden anger there. Uh, and then sarcasm and flippancy. If you want to know what sarcasm is, go to the dictionary and look, and it's uh, what sarcasm is. The definition is the cutting of flesh. When we're sarcastic with our tongues, it's like we cut the other person down. And that is a form of hidden anger. Instead of being honest about our feelings, we can be very slurring and sarcastic and flippant, just something off the cuff. Flippancy is one of my big ones. I have to be aware of that and kind of joking about something that I'm really serious about. Uh, but I do that to kind of, of uh, ease the, take the edge off the anger. And it's really dishonest when I do that. But that's one of mine, flippancy. Uh, and then another one is over politeness. 
uh, constant cheerfulness. J grin and bear it. People can just grin and bear it and underneath be seething. That's hidden anger. Now, a lot of times your eating disorder people, particularly your compulsive overeaters, are people that are holding a lot of anger in their body. And, you know, they come off as pleasant and funny and nice, but underneath, they are angry and it takes a lot of food to push that kind of anger down. Uh, and so another one is sighing, just, ah, ah. have you ever been around anyone like that or have you done it? Just ah. really, we want someone to pay attention to how frustrated we are. And frustration is a form of anger. So we're doing the big sigh and we're really wanting somebody to say, well, what's going on? Can I help you? And they don't ask. And just about the time they get ready to ask, or about the time you get ready to tell them, they walk off, they don't even ask you. And so, you know, we all want someone to say, hey, what's going on? Uh, I hear there may be a little anger there. So another one is smiling when hurting. You know, just smiling, everything's okay here in hurts is manipulation. When we're saying, oh, you hurt my feelings. Anger is, gives us strength, energy, and motivation. When someone says something, if we can use some healthy anger and talk about it, it gives us strength, energy, and motivation to bring about changes. When we say, oh, you hurt my feelings, that's a form of manipulation. Keep in mind, this is all my interpretation you have the privilege to have your own interpretation. And let me hear from you, I'd like to know. And then another one is, uh, remember anger turned inward turns to depression. And as we go through this list, see how the anger gets heavier and heavier because carrying around excess anger is about carrying around excess baggage. And so watch and see uh, if you start having frequent disturbing <clears throat> and frightening dreams. That can be hidden anger, particularly of the past, a lot of times of your childhood, that you're carrying around unresolved anger. Another thing, if you have big feelings around something, exaggerated feelings of anger around something, what we call it, if it's hysterical, it's historical. If you're having big feelings about something that really doesn't warrant that kind of outburst, you can count on it's something about your past that is unresolved. Another one is uh, over-controlled mon monotone speaking voice. When we've got that hidden anger, we just talk in a monotone voice because we have a fear of uh, pitching our voice too high or too low, no, 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 and it takes lots of energy to keep that kind of anger down. Uh, by this time, we had sleeplessness can set in where you can't sleep. And, I, and a lot of people are experiencing this now uh, in these days of the, of the uh, pandemic. People are having nightmares that are not, they're in you know, the sleeplessness, not being able to sleep. That's laying down and all of these problems coming to you. And then having the anger of what's going on and not knowing what to do with the anger. Uh, about this time, boredom, lots of boredom going on in our country, boredom and apathy. Boredom, this is my definition of boredom, is the ultimate of self-centeredness. When we're bored, we're saying, I can't stand my own company. I don't like to be by myself. So I have to get out, be with people, go to bars, do this, do that. We have to be with people. I am not saying, you know, God made us to live in community. And so when we're not able to be in community, whether it's church or a 12 step program or with your neighbors, it it's a, has been a difficult time and we're having to re-enter slowly. <clears throat> and uh, the boredom, when we're bored, remember that's the ultimate of self-centeredness. And then we get into a place of apathy where we just don't care. And this is when we're all going around wearing pajamas or not cleaning our houses and having lots of time. So, Hidden anger can be the uh, core to that. And then we get have loss of interest when enthusiastic, the depression is setting in, the anger is there. Movement slow down. It's like we're walking and 
quicksand. We just bog down with the anger. And anger is tiresome. We get tired more easily. <clears throat> it is like, I keep saying, lugging around excess baggage. And then we begin, we get irritable uh, and excessive irritability over trifles. This is when you have one nerve left and everybody gets solid. This is when someone will turn a corner up on the throw rug and it'll send you in the orbit. It's those getting, having that trigger type of anger over just small things. That's a form of hidden anger <clears throat> instead of owning the anger. And then drowsiness at inappropriate times. Having carrying around anger and expressed tires a person out. Uh, and so when you're, this turns in, this is going into more of the depression. You know, when you want to sleep, you go from not sleeping to want to sleep all the time. Maybe even want to sleep 12, 14 hours a day. You want to stay in bed and cover up your head. The anger has turned inward and turns to depression. And then you wake up more tired than you were when you went to bed. And then clenched jaws, especially when sleeping. A lot of people wear <clears throat> mouth guards, and that is un many times is unresolved anger. It comes out in our sleep when we clench our jaws. And then unintentional body movements, unaware of tapping. You know, when you're tapping, tapping, or uh, always fidgeting or moving, you know, that can be a form of hidden anger. So I hope this is helpful. It's just a little short uh, tidbit on hidden anger. The anger left unaddressed uh, turns to depression and it can be, you know, we, you can get very sick over it. One of the things that we do here at Shades is we do uh, a, a monthly intensive. It's a four day intense <clears throat> program. I still do that, and my daughter, who's been a therapist for over 30 years, she's my co-therapist. And that's what we work on, is those core issues that is driving the anger. <clears throat> and that usually is the, the anger that has been there for years, perhaps started in childhood, but it manifests itself in daily life when things don't go our way. And heaven forbid if we all ever get our own way because, you know, a lot of times our way will kill us. So I hope this has been helpful. Take care of yourselves uh, and cut yourself some slack during these days. And if you can, get out in the beautiful sunshine uh, and, you know, the states are beginning to open up. Uh, don't go out full force. Take your time. Observe all of the, you know, the wearing the mask the gloves, whatever you're willing to do to protect yourself and others, because in the long run, it's going to be best for all of us. Have a wonderful rest of the week, and I hope something that I have said might be helpful. Thank you.